So the last thing I want to touch on is obviously you've had a very public battle with cancer. Sure, yeah. That's been going on for how long? I mean, how long have you been living with cancer now? Um, over three years. Well. Uh, three or four years now. I think honestly, the you've handled it with like great grace and optimism from from the very beginning. That's inspired me. And um, first of all, thank you for for doing that. Of course, I, mean, I, I think mean, it, it's been a beacon of light. I think for a lot of people who have just mm -hmm. like seen how you can handle it with with dignity. And I know that Ela's dealing with some. Her her dad just got recently yeah. diagnosed with cancer. We were talking about it yeah, backstage. Yeah, talking about it, but I and it's really nice to hear you being, you know, optimistic about it. Um, basically, well, for, my first question is because the last update that I was able to find was from like June or something. Sure, yeah. Um, how is it going? What, what, are, what are the updates? So basically where we are right now is that it is stabilized, meaning it's not gone away, but it's not growing. So there's a couple of small tumors in my liver and there's one very, very small nodule in my lung. Mm -hmm. So it's stage four, which means it spread past the initial place it was stage four is pretty bad that's when survival chances go in the toilet mm. uh, on october the 15th 2017 uh, 2015 sorry um i was told you probably got two years to live that was two years and five days ago that's crazy. Uh, okay, you <laughs> fuck those fuck cancer dude so fuck those odds and fuck, fuck those, those numbers. Odds, yeah um but the problem with uh, met, uh, metabolized cancer is the uh, metastasized cancer. Sorry, is that it can go anywhere. It gets in the blood. It can spread to any organ. Mm -hmm. it becomes harder to nail it down. You know, you can't do targeted therapies as easily. You can't just cut it out. So, it being stable at this stage is very, very good because it means the therapy works and it is continuing to work. And I have fairly minimal side effects. Still got my beard. Still got me. You look good. I mean, you know? you. you, you, you you don't look like a guy who has cancer. No, yeah. I'm being honest. And last year, I sure as hell did. You know, mm -hmm. there was a people were asking. Uh, I, I don't know if you know. I did a voice back for StarCraft Two, and the photo they gave for me for that was in black and white. And people were like, "Did he die? No. <laughs> Is that why they made it black <laughs> yeah. and white?" But no, uh, I, I looked terrible in that photo. But it, it, you know, I the chemo sucks. Of course, it sucks. I have it every two weeks. Uh, I get plugged in on the Wednesday. I get the big dose in the clinic, and then they put me on a portable thing to take home for the rest of it until Friday. So I'm pretty much like out of action for two days, and then I, it takes me about two days to really get back on my feet, you know? What is that experience mm. like? I, I feel like this conversation doesn't exist anywhere it's, with someone with I, cancer. Yeah, I can't about believe it like, that so you, you go through this every <laughs> two weeks, and you're managing to keep everything going. You yeah, still it's work. You still I mean, one, I, like, do I don't stuff. see another option, you know? It's like... Yeah. Everyone has a job. Just Everyone's going to do the job. Strength, it's, you know, it's yeah. you know, my job's a huge motivator for me. You know, I'm proud of what I do and I enjoy it, and I know that I'm very blessed to be able to do it as mm -hmm. a career. Right. So I want to take every opportunity I can to do it. That's why I'm out here for TwitchCon. That's why I'm going sure. to BlizzCon. It's yeah. you know, I, I want to take joy in that, and I get a lot of satisfaction out of it. And that also means I want to be back on my feet as quick as possible. So you know, I look at it and I say, right, okay, I've got ten. If I if I can get back on my feet, I've got 10 good days and four bad days every two weeks. And you know what? That's okay. Like, I'd rather have 14 good days, but I can't have 14 good days, so I'll take 10. That's okay. Mm -hmm. And, if, I mean, the experience of actually being on the therapy itself, I mean, it essentially turns you into a zombie. It's one of the best ways to describe it. I mean, it's your whole body is in pain. Uh, just constant aching. There's a feeling of sickness, although that varies on a person-to-person -person basis. I get a subdermal injection right here it's quite new they only just started doing this and it's a gel and it slowly goes into your bloodstream over the course of about five days huh. and it's an anti-emetic so it's an anti-nausea gel it knocked the nausea on the head in a really good way like you still feel a bit sick but i used to like throw up like eight times at ten times a day like Whoa. until i was just throwing up stomach acid that's gonna oh be it really... just burned it was nothing but that, burning that part of chemo has got to be really Difficult to the healing process, right? That yeah, whole thing of not eating you up badly. and puking. Yeah, because you get massively dehydrated. Like that's the advice that I give to anyone who has to go through chemotherapy. Two things: one, hydrate for the love of God. Like drink fruit juice in particular. Mm. Don't drink water. Drink fruit juice. Calories. It gives, yep, calories, sugar, really important. The taste will help you drink faster. In my case, uh, one of my side effects is uh, 
I have a cold sensitivity when I'm on the pump. Mm -hmm. So if I drink something too cold, it can shut my throat and kill me. Oh, my God. Yeah. Also, if I just touch something that's too cold, Mm -hmm. uh, that kind of sucks. So I've got to wear gloves and make sure, you know, stuff's at room temperature before I drink it. But I found that, like, drinking fruit juice, I can drink it a lot faster. That means I can hydrate better. And the other thing is force yourself to eat. You threw it up, fuck you, eat it again. Just not the same thing, obviously. Don't give but, up. Yeah. yeah, just keep keep eating, dude, like, because it is fuel. It literally is fuel. It's fuel to fight. If you give up on that, everything gives up. But every time I eat, even if I don't like the taste of it, I don't like the feeling of eating it, about 10 minutes after I've eaten, or even as I'm eating, I'll feel this burst of energy, like... It's like becoming awake again, at least for a couple of hours. It's incredible to hear that because I feel like all of us who aren't sick, we take food for such granted, right? And also it's the most basic thing that you can think of. You got to fuel yourself to continue. Right. It seems so obvious until your body is screaming at you not to Mm -hmm. and telling you, I'm going to throw that up if you do that. And you're just like, no, you're not. I'm going to eat it. And if I throw it up, I'm going to cook another thing and I'm going to eat that until something stays down because mm-hmm. you need those nutrition you need you need that nutrition <laughs> if you don't have it your recovery is going to get longer and longer and your your immune system is going to just collapse you know i have a surprisingly strong immune system i should have no immune system by now my immune system is fine mm. it's taking a bit of a beating but it's fine mm. uh, a lot of people at my stage can't even travel because it would kill them you know mm. catch yeah, catch a cold you're dead mm. um for me now i've been fortunate in that they found the right combination of drugs. They found a chemo that was unpleasant, but I could tolerate it. Mm. And I've got a good oncologist that knows what he's doing. So, you know, all I need him to do is keep giving me the stuff that works and I'll keep fighting it and I'll keep going. And that's the only option there is, just to keep going. But what, what other option is there? You just give up? Nah, there's nothing else, nothing beyond this. Mm-hmm. You know, you've got to fight 10 good days, four bad days, even if it's... One good day, 13 bad days. That's still one good day. Do you find that you've become more optimistic in some way since your diagnosis was cancer? In some ways. Like, it's hard to worry about petty shit (laughs) when you've got, you know, death staring you in the face. Do you feel like you have some knowledge that you wish you could share? Like, I know, for example, to use it mildly, you'll get a flu and you'll be like, man, I can't fucking wait till I'm not sick again. And then the moment you're better, you forget all about that. (laughs) Is there some kind of feeling that you're always having like that, that you wish you could just share, that you wish everyone could appreciate and feel? Is that something? I mean, it, think of, of chemo as getting over the worst flu of your life um, and feeling like you were not a real person while you had it. That sounds awful. Like you, you're a zombie, like you're even trapped in your own head sometimes. Like think about being so tired <coughs> that you can't watch Netflix because it's too exhausting. That That's what it does to you. And as a result, what you got to do, you get trapped in your own mind. Um, I, you know, even listening to things like audiobooks, it's like bright light, uh, sounds, anything, uh-huh. any kind of stimulus becomes scary. It's, you know, you jump in at shadows. It, it screws with your mind, it screws with your head in a big way. There's a fog, paranoia. It is a really nasty thing to put in your body, but ultimately you got to do it and you got to keep doing it if you want to actually overcome it. You know, there's there's no easy way to do chemotherapy. There's no magical advice, but there is stuff you have to do. It's tough. It helps to have someone close by you. Helps to have someone like my wife that will push me to do these things. That will say, "You've got to eat. You've Mm got to drink. I don't care what you think. Eat the fucking food." Having somebody like that, having that kind of support system, is essential. I don't think I'd be alive if I didn't have that. God bless her. Yep, indeed. Well, that's really inspiring. <laughs> well, like it's I said, brutal, it's, man. It, it is what it is. You play the hand you dealt, you yeah. do the best you can, you don't give up on it. You know, it's because it's not just giving up on your life. It's giving up on everyone that's ever been touched by what you've done. It's your friends, your family, your pets, for God's sake. You know, you want to be there for them. Mm-hmm. Like they deserve to have you there for them. Mm-hmm. And the only way that that's going to happen is if you keep fighting. And it's possible. Like, Fuck these statistics. I, they, they don't mean anything. Uh, if you don't like the statistics, change the stats. You know, live long, outlive it. Just keep going because science is fucking amazing. And they come up with new stuff every day. They come up with new treatments all the time. Do you think that chemo will be looked back on and hopefully 
as soon as 10 years as this, like, almost like how we used to electrocute people with yes. mental illnesses. It'll be looked like as leeches. It'll be barbarous. Yes. Because we're killing the patient and hoping the cancer dies faster. Mm. Right. Yeah. It's not a great way to do things, but it's the best thing we've got right now as a general first line of defense. It's not the only thing. And people should be aware of that, you know? If chemo fails for us, I have a neighbor. She's had stage four cancer for 20 years. That's She's incredible. currently doing immunotherapy, brand new immunotherapy. She's doing really well on it. Mm. Like the tumors are shrinking. She had cancer all <laughs> over her body. You'd be shocked by what is out there or what is being developed right as we speak. That's awesome. And all you got to do as someone that has it is to give those guys a bit more time. Mm. Give them as much time as you can give them. And that means putting in your effort and surviving. Right. Right. Simple as that, really. Is there an organization that we can donate to that you, in particular, high, hold in high interest that's worthy of people's money? I mean, there's quite a few. Uh, what you've got to watch out for with cancer in particular, there's a few that are not a good idea. Like, I always get upset in uh, October because it's Breast Cancer Awareness Month and a lot of the companies donate to Susan G. Komen, right? which is a terrible organization. Mm. They, they waste money on awareness raising. They waste sure. money all over the place. They don't give research. to research. And they sue other charities. Whoa. They're a disgusting organization. <laughs> oh God, what? Fighting in the Horrible. name of cancer. Absolutely wow. horrendous. So, so where do we send money? I, I'm, it's I'm, like, yeah, you can send re money to a local research hospital. You'd be surprised really? how helpful that can be. You can donate directly to your local research hospital. Look up LA, like I would, if it's me, just LA Cancer Absolutely. Institute. Boom, here's my yeah, money. There will, be a, there will be a link to donate to them like that's I always money wonder, going directly towards the fight you've got these huge organizations like american cancer cancer society Insta society yeah. or whatever and i'm like if i give them five thousand bucks what where's it going? where's that money going yeah it's always good to look on charity navigator you know that's a very good site for figuring out where the money's going and look at the breakdown look at how much is going to research mm -hmm. versus right. administrative cost versus awareness as far as i'm research. concerned should be going to research right awareness for some cancers it's people quite know important. about cancer yeah i mean people they do <laughs> The, the, there is we're so, good on awareness. Yeah, you know, the, there's still some things that would be good. I would like to see there be a bigger push to get you know, for younger men, especially when they have mm -hmm. symptoms, to go and get checked. That's what I said when I first got diagnosed. I, you know, I had colon cancer. Yeah. It's embarrassing. You don't want to do it. And at this age, nobody thinks they've got colon cancer. We're talking cancer. backstage. It's like in America, they don't even recommend you get a finger up the ass no, until they, you're like 50. Yeah, now, 50. Yeah. Now, that wonderful experience of like 28 or whatever. But ultimately... Yeah, it's fucking embarrassing. You know what's more embarrassing? Dying. That's pretty <laughs> shitty. Yeah. Shitting yourself when you die. Maybe don't some do people, that. I mean, some people even do it. Well, never mind. It's, yeah. <laughs> but ultimately, people have to take their own health seriously. And yeah. if they see symptoms, for the love of God, please, please. <laughs> if it's nothing, fucking celebrate the fact that it's nothing. Sure. And okay, you just went through some unpleasant shit. Maybe you got a colonoscopy or a finger up your ass. Big fucking deal. You're going to yeah. have to have it sooner rather than later. Yeah. It's going to have to happen. So you might as well get Finger it over with. Finger in the ass or death? Yeah. <laughs> pick one. <laughs> I get fingered all day, boy. I think it's a pretty obvious choice. Yeah. So. I think that's actually really important yeah, to where is that awareness. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, take your own health just seriously. go to the fucking doctor. I'm, I think we're all guilty of prolonging. We absolutely are. You know, it's like, but man, you've got to take care of your shit. You do. Uh, ultimately, I could have been in a way better position if I had. And I didn't, because I was embarrassed. I fucked Is that right? Up. Yeah. How long did you have symptoms but didn't go to the doctor? About a year. Really? A year? Yeah. yeah. It's like, because there's, there's a bunch of other explanations for it. And you always assume, oh, it's something else. It's my diet. May I ask what or, symptoms, or is that too personal? Feel free uh, to I mean, I, I, I told people about it during my initial video, you know? It's, we're talking about shit like, you know, weird colored stool and rectal bleeding, you know? Mm. The kind of thing is like, you see blood and you're still like, oh, maybe I just had a you know, a raw steak, you know, rare steak or whatever. Or you maybe, rationalize it away. Uh, yeah, I mean, I thought I had IBS. I thought I had maybe even Crohn's, you know, sure. or something like that. Um, yeah. Or diverticulitis. I didn't think I had colon cancer. You know, yeah. you always assume it's not cancer, it's something else. I'll be fine. Yeah, and then you, yeah, you prolong it and you're like, you know what, this is uncomfortable, it's fine. And then you eventually like, all right, I'm going to go find out if I have Crohn's or whatever. It's like, no, you have colon cancer. I'm like, well, that's shit. I yes. uh, probably should have gone earlier, you know, and anybody, if you have a symptom like that, don't fucking ignore it. Mm. Don't, yeah, it's embarrassing. Get over it. Go to a doctor for the love of God, mm. you know, save yourself 
a shit ton of pain later on. Right. Is there something about cancer that like you came to learn by being through it that most people don't know? <sighs> it. There's no feeling of having it. Like right now, if you ask like, do you feel like you have an illness? No. Hmm. I mean, I sure. think that's what's really um, shocking also... to my dad. Like he can't confront the fact that he's so ill because he doesn't feel it. He it's has there. a really bad cough, yeah. but when he doesn't, it feels it, it feels looks normal. completely normal. Yeah, so. I don't know. I have a tumor. I don't, can't feel that I have a tumor in my liver or in my lung. That's that doesn't impact my daily life. You know, there's probably some pain there, but you know, I'm on painkillers. It's probably just buried there somewhere. And the weird thing is, I guess you know, people view cancer as this thing which will you know turn you into a desiccated husk immediately when you've got it and completely destroy your life no it really doesn't and that's actually scarier because hmm. you know you've got a cut on your arm and it's bleeding you can see i've been wounded hmm. and you have a response to that you got something inside you that might be silently eating away at you you don't you don't even feel that it's there and it's you don't have that but, pain response yeah mm -hmm. it's disturbing it's it's insidious uh, and obviously, a lot of it comes down to the fact you don't feel it before either. You don't feel it before the diagnosis, but you still don't feel it afterwards either. Mm -hmm. You only feel everything around it. You know, the side mm -hmm. effects of the chemo, mm -hmm. the pain from, say, you know, the fact that I've had an abdominal hernia for years from the surgery, you know, collapsed muscle wall, things like that. You know, I'm on, you know I have to take painkillers to just manage that and stay functional. Mm -hmm. But the actual disease... No, it's just there. It's invisible. Hmm. It's creepy as fuck. That is fucking weird. Do you ever feel like irrationally angry at your own body for trying to kill you? Totally. It's like, fuck off. Yeah. I mean, I think honestly that's quite healthy. Like being able to visualize it as a thing you can fight is mm. much better than having it be a thing you don't understand. Mm. Right. Um, and a lot of people do that. It's like, oh, it's recommended even. You have you an know? enemy that yeah. you identify. You have an enemy. You can see. You can imagine what it looks like. You can imagine what you have to do to defeat it versus something you don't understand spreading throughout your body without any you know without you even noticing and with there being no solid easy take this pill and you'll get better option sure that's 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 scary i don't think about it that way though you know i was i, view, I viewed it as the enemy ever since i got it i mm -hmm. view it as something beatable because it is you know and every time we get a scan and we see it's either shrunk or not got big. I'm like, we're winning. You know, Do you I'm think still that's alive. A, it seems like you've been fighting it successfully for a long time. You've beat the odds. And it seems that every time there's an update, it's, it's good news or yeah. at least not bad news. Yeah, exactly. And, you know, and, and, and honestly, at least not bad news is good enough. Good you know, you'd right. love mm -hmm. that miraculous remission where it's just you sure. come in and it's, it's gone. But I'm facing the reality that that's probably not going to happen. And... You just got to kind of live with it. You know, I know I'm going to need this treatment indefinitely. Do you think that that kind of uh, personifying it as the enemy is has been one of the keys to your sick fighting it successfully? I think so. Mentally and and physically. You know? Mentally is such so important. It, it sounds like a cliche. It's not. I know it is 90 percent mental because that's what drives everything else. Mm -hmm. It drives your ability to fight it physically. It drives your ability to rehydrate and to want to get better and to make sure you eat and fuel your body and all that sort of thing. To get up and not skip that treatment this way. It's like, I could not go in because I know it's going to hurt. And you'll be fine. But I'll go feel in. fine. Yeah, exactly. It's scary. That's the scary thing. You'll feel I'll fine. I'll skip it and I'll feel fine. Yeah, and what if I just skip the next one as well? Like That's fucked up. Mm -hmm. but, you, but you get up, you know? I get up at 9 a.m. on that Wednesday. I go in. They do the blood test, you know, and they get a needle and they plug it in right there. I can see. You know, yeah. uh, plug it into the port, goes in there, stays in there for two days. They rip it out. They taste the saline as they flush it, you know, to make sure that it's clean. And then you do it all over again. And you've got to just keep doing it because if you tap out on that, that's it. Because mm -hmm. this ain't going to give up. This is going to keep trying to kill you. Mm hmm so you have to keep fighting it back. You can't just give it a break. Is there something... I noticed you saying something about, like, you... I mean, do you appreciate time in a different way? Because I, I, 
something you said that struck with me is like, I get 10 good days and four bad days and yeah. that's enough for me. Do you have a different appreciation for time? Yeah, it was like, um, you know, when we were talking earlier about would I go back and, you know, redo a video or change the way that I criticize things. I think a lot of that came from that directly. Mm -hmm. It's like, I can do a limited number of videos less than I used to be able to do. I can work less than I used to be able to do. I can play less than I used to be able to do. So let's make sure that time counts for something. And a lot of it is also, you assume at this age, you've got, well, I've got 50, 60 years with the family. What if you didn't? Well, you know, you don't know how long you've got. So, you know, made me want to try and be a better dad. There's no doubt about that. You know, I wanted to connect more with my stepson mm. than I have. And I've been doing that. I wanted to connect more with my wife, make sure that we get a good, you know, we get a good run out of it. I intend to be around when I'm fucking 100 years old. We'll be still bitching about video games <laughs> if I can be. But sometimes there might be something outside of my control that, you know, maybe fighting isn't enough. Maybe that's just not enough to keep going. But if that's the case, then you've got to make sure that you spend the time you've got in the best way you can. And even then, it's not like it changes you overnight. Like, you still want to go read Reddit comments. You still want to go <laughs> bitch your people on Twitter. Like, you can't change the habit of a lifetime. But there is something in the back of your mind that said, do you have something better to do? You know? And mm. maybe that, that does change you over time, I think. Mm. Well, thanks for sharing that with us. Oh, of course. And... Thanks for spending your time, especially yeah. here with us. I mean, I really appreciate it. I enjoy it. It's great to be out here. I get out here so rarely, mm. you know, as much as I love the greenness of North Carolina, sometimes right. the smog of LA is a wonderful yeah. place to go. Right. Yeah, for sure. <laughs>